Hi, it's Vertin. Miss Desert Flannel, is Ezra still with you? Miss Desert Flannel? Spathodia has decided to supervise the construction herself, and Ulu is now with her at the site. I'm wondering how you are doing with Ezra. No response. Are they... Not in the room, I knew it. Huh? Showing Ezra what the world is like. Be right back. Desert flannel. Put your feet and your head. The people here never look down. That's how you get muddy shoes when you're out here. Here, take my hand. Miss Desert Flannel? What is this place? What are we doing here? Something that needs to be done. And something that needs to be said. Hey, big bloke! Don't get in my way! rugby game. It's not a formal game, but the audience's enthusiasm is burning. I mean, it's hard to get a ticket. But I'm Desert Flannel, and I know people on the streets, even when we're outside Melbourne. Sorry, I've never watched any games, and I don't know the rules of rugby. I... I don't think I'll understand any of this. Do you mind? No, I'm cool with that. Because the game is not what we're after. You see that guy over there? That's Tom, a shining new star in the NRL. The best fullback they've ever had. He's from the Melbourne Sail Club. Club. They have a seagull as their club's mascot with a fish and a chip in its mouth. Yes. Okay. And that bloke over there, that's Kip Carl of the Hobart Blue Lake. He's the kind of player who knows how to really tackle. They call him the Unbreakable King. And lastly, I want you to look at that smaller guy. That's Russell. Doesn't look tough, does he? But he is the slippery Jaboa because, man, he is fast when he gets the ball. But what is this to do with us? I still don't understand. Ezra, guess how many of them are Arcanists? Nice one! Nice one! Russell made it again! Excellent interception! The key score, Narajimal is slippery as butter. Run and run for it, Russell! Victory is going to the Shepherds of Melbourne! <laughs> Mankind is known for their physical resilience and endurance. That is to say, Tom and Kip Carl are humans, while Russell, whose skills and unpredictability are his strengths, is an Arcanist. Hmm, a reasonable deduction. Physical resilience and varied skills are indeed the respective features of mankind and Arcanists. However, things are not as simple as they appear.
In fact, all of them are arcanists. <clears throat> Shh. Give me that thing. Here. Be careful. Don't overdose. Painkillers are addictive, you know. And the newspaper's gonna interview you champions, so don't get high in front of the camera. Hey, listen. Sporting is great fun, but it can also be dangerous, especially for sports like rugby, MMA, or boxing, which involve a lot of intense physical contact. And the arcanists who are good at healing will naturally become the best athletes of all. Fifteen minutes. That's all they take. Most of the arcane treatments take only 15 minutes to heal the patient. And before that happens, the athletes would just take painkillers to help themselves get through the game. And after the 15 minutes, they are refreshed and healthy, like those athlete dolls you find in the souvenir store. They can slide, impact like a maniac, and don't have to worry about missing any important sporting sessions of injured. This is an advantage? That's right. An unbelievable advantage. But are they really as good as they look? Their glory comes with a price. Ligament damage and the irreversible tears keep recurring. But there is still an elephant in the room. It paces around, making noises which are unfit for the place. Like this conversation we're having in the locker room. But on the sports field, where blood boils, power and strength are the only things that matter. Nobody has the time to stop and ask what we're doing here, just like they don't have the time to notice the elephant. Ten years ago, Margaret of Broken Hill was invincible on the court. In August last year, she died on the last day of winter. Did she die of recurrent injuries? It's very likely that Arcanist athletes who repeatedly get injured and heal themselves would get hurt on the same body part in the future. The body will become fragile. They might even twist their ankle from walking. Sometimes even break a bone or two. No. She died from an overdose. She needed a horrific amount of painkillers to ease her pain. So much that her body was overwhelmed. This... this is cruel. We have to report this to the Foundation and solve it once and for all. The athletes could have played in a safer way if given help. But what if I tell you the Arcanists also don't have a choice? For humans who have the talent for sports, they can win medals with their physical strength. So, Arcanists have to make the most of their advantages to, to keep oppressed with their competitors? <sighs> I... I had no idea. I'm sorry, truly. I didn't mean to make you feel guilty. Nor did I deliberately put you in pain. But Ezra, I was once one of them. I used to live on the prize money. I'm only telling the truth. It is happening every day, every moment, and every second. Drug addiction, premature senility, and irreversible physical damage. This is almost a destined end for every Arcanist athlete. And nobody is held accountable for this. Not the clubs or the hosts of the games. Drug abuse is a personal behavior. That's it. Those people who are passionate about sports and don't want to lead a life without them. I have no idea how they would make a living or handle a quiet life. 
so I know they don't have much of a choice. The sport industry of humans is generous. They offer equal chances to human and arcanist athletes. But it's also cruel. And the athletes are like the girls in Cinderella's story who wish their feet would fit the glass slippers. They have no choice but to cut off part of their heels to earn the glory. This... this isn't fair. These sports and rules are not appropriate for arcanists. They... they have been treated unjustly. They aren't taken seriously and respected as athletes. Is... is Spathodea one of them? That's why she was... so furious. So the rumor that they are turning against each other is true. Camera, this way. This is the human representative of the event. You... you are that paparazzi? This is not how a polite kid would address others, Mr. Ezra. I am just a concerned journalist who ran into you while reporting a rugby game. Watch your mouth, mister! This is harassment! We are cornered. Then we will break his camera and let him know the price of being a long-tongued liar! <laughs> 